welcome to the handover video for the Bailey Unicorn Cadiz. Um, I will take you around the outside of the caravan first. We will start at the back and just to explain how everything works for you. Okay. At the back, to start off, we've got the light clusters. So these, these are for your running lights, indicators, reversing lights, brake lights. Now you've also got the Highline brake light. And obviously where your number plate will go. And down at the bottom we've got the corner steadies. We'll show you how to uh, lift those and drop those down later on in the video. First part you get to is the, uh, the toilet cassette area. And there's two parts to this. Uh, I have unlocked everything just to uh, make things easier and quicker on the, on the video. Right, this is where the pink rinse or the pink fluid goes in. Um, pink fluid mixed with water, depending on which fluid you've got. Please read the instructions to see the uh, concentrations you need to put in. It's usually about a capful to a couple of litres, but that's where that goes in. Okay, underneath that, this is where the toilet cassette uh, is located. It's the standard Thetford, um, and when it's full, the uh, a light will come on uh, by the, on the toilet to so show that it's full. Just go in here, lift the orange handle, pull it back towards you, and then you can lift the, uh, the cassette out. Okay, it does have this handle will come up. It does come up, so you can wheel the cassette off to the chemical disposal point. To empty this funnel goes out and take the top off then lift and then press this orange button at the top. That releases any air pressure in there to so everything will come out. Okay this cap itself obviously you've taken it off first after you've rinsed out the uh, uh, cassette, put, you've got some markings in here of how much fluid to put in there, the blue fluid that you'll need to put in there. It just goes in there. Throw that back. Okay. To, to swirl this out, when, you've, when you have emptied it, just literally slide this cover back to catch the orange button there and then inside there you can see the, that's where you would rinse out and empty out. You can see a little float in there that little float will uh, when it's raised up to the point of emptying that will trigger a light to go on into the cassette to uh, when it requires emptying but when putting it back in close that flap put that across and then Simply lift, slide into place, and it clicks down in there. That is now done. When emptying, uh, because you've got some fluid, pink fluid in there, sometimes this will require emptying, particularly for winterization. Uh, there's a, a little pipe just above the cassette that comes down. Take the little bung out, and that will then, just using gravity, empty out all of the fluid. Continuing around the side, I'm just going around the off side now. The first thing to notice, obviously the windows into the bedroom area. But underneath we have two waste uh, water outlets uh, for both sinks, as in the kitchen and the bathroom, and for the shower. Uh, bits of pipe gone there into either into a waste master or if you have a long enough piece, a uh, couple of pieces, they can go directly into the drainage that you may have on your pitch. Okay, then we've got the alloy wheels. Uh, the wheels need to be torqued up to 130 Newton meters. And Baileys do have slightly different uh, wheel nuts, but you have an adapter to uh, add on to an ordinary um, 
ratchet. So you've got two vents for the fridge and the freezer. And underneath here, we have um, an auto engage motor mover, which I will share the details with. Well, I'll give you the details a bit later on of how to do that. Uh, the gas locker. Uh, it unloads as such. Turn the key, the little catch pops out. Turn that and you're into the gas locker. You can take, it will take two gas bottles in here and it is set up for propane, which is the orange or the red bottles as it stands. Exhaust, uh, for the Alde heating system, if you're running on gas, that would be exhaust part there. And the next part is coming up to the water part, so I'll get a water, water barrel and the pump. So I've got the water barrel now, and I've also got the pump in my hand. Right, to fit the pump, very simple, and this is a whale pump. It simply clicks the pump direct in, flat comes down a bit, and that's then held in place. Okay. The actual electrical pump side goes into the water roll. And the lid there just stops any dirt or anything going inside. That means now that we are able to bring water on board uh, this caravan when we are ready to do so. And to remove, lift the flap right up and just pull the, pull the pump straight out. Okay, towards the front of the caravan, we have uh, an external locker. Uh, but they keep boots or anything like that, anything you like in there. Okay. Right. The hitch is the Alco hitch. This is the, the van caravan goes on the Alco chassis. It's also got the Alco ATC, which is Alco trailer control. And uh, there's a sensor on the chassis itself. So if the van caravan itself does start to move about, whilst moving, uh, it will put the brakes on as a safety feature. It's got the Alco hitch. And uh, again, this is something we'll show to you later. Okay, going round to the near side, you've got another external locker, exactly the same as on the outside. There we go. We've also got an external gas pump. So if you want an external gas barrel again. There is a flap underneath that flap. There's a 230 volt socket and an external socket so that can run through into your into your owner. Here we've got uh, a good set of information. It's got on there the MTPLM uh, 1498. Uh, also says about the tyre pressure being uh, required at 60 psi. That's 4.2 bar. Um, so that's important because the motor mover is set up, it's calibrated to work on a tyre pressure of 60 psi. Uh, that's how it fits on the, to be exact. Let's see the door. There's the door. The battery locker inside here. Obviously, the brand, uh, not surprisingly, the battery and where the electric hookup goes in. There's the ledger battery and there's your electric hookup. You'll also notice there, here is the isolator for the motor mover, and behind the electric hookup. There is uh, an external TV point and a six volt external socket. And finally, on the outside, we have another locker which goes underneath one of the beds. In here, we've got your leg winder, uh, the winder to get the spare wheel uh, down, and also a winder should the motor mover fail and you would have to wind it out manually in the unlikely event I should say and your electric cable so that's the exterior of the caravan next we will uh, be going inside to show you the features in there inside the daily uh, unicorn 
it is now. Uh, sorry if it's a bit rain for you. Just to give you an idea of the layout. Uh, two single beds in here. Uh, rear bathroom. But the first thing I want to uh, bring your attention to is as you enter the caravan on the left hand side, you have the main control unit. Uh, to turn the main power on, it's master, so master switch on. So everything's on. Now, uh, the next switch is the light switch. I'll just turn that around, just to show you that the lights all come on at that point. It doesn't look too bright in here uh, as it is, but this would be like black pool illuminations at night. You also have an awning light uh, on the outside and a pump where it says pump this is the water pump now this uh, once you've got your aqua roll connected and you want to turn the water on press on pump and that will bring the water in now whilst we're talking about the water there is something i need to show you um, so i'm going down to the underneath the uh, sofa on the right hand side as you come into the caravan there's a little cabinet there you have to excuse me while I get on my hands and knees. But in there, you can see a yellow valve. Whilst the yellow valve is in that position, which is the in a uh, horizontal position, that is allowing water to come into the caravan uh, from the pump. Now, when winterizing or traveling, and you don't want water in here, sloshing about, lift that yellow valve to the vertical position and that will drop all the water out from your water heater and uh, your water system. At that point I also recommend that you open up your taps so all water can drain out. Okay. All this information will be in your handbook. So that's the water. Now, the heating. Alde heating in here. Uh, to switch on, well, you can see at the moment, I just pressed the on button there, but you can see off is uh, flashing at the moment. I want to switch that on. So that now is flashing on. To move across, oh, it's quite difficult to see in this light probably. Um, I will move across by pressing the arrow here. And that will then bring us to the temperature you want within inside the caravan. Now, to raise and lower that temperature, uh, the minus or off minus will bring the temperature down. Hopefully you can see that's coming down. Or raise it up however you wish by pressing the up plus, which is on the on button. When you've come to the desired temperature that you want the van to be, press store. And that's how warm the uh, temperature will be inside the caravan. Pressing the arrow across again, then goes to the water. At the moment, the water is off. Press plus to go on, minus to go off. So it's plus to go on, off. That's how your water is on or off. Okay, and then store. That sets the water is now on. The water heater is now on. Now turn it off, set it, that's, there you are. Next setting is for the gas. Now you can use this system on gas or electric. If you want to use it on gas, because you have no electric hookup, you uh, press on over there. So the gas uh, little flame is, fla is flashing. Then you've got the off and on, on or off. They are your options. It's either on gas or not. Uh, we haven't got any gas connected, so I'm going to leave that there off. Then move across. Then the electric, the two and the electric sign there. That shows we are currently running on two kilowatts of power to use the heating system and the hot water system. Uh, you can go off two kilowatts. Sorry. With the electric sign uh, is flashing at the moment. The options we have are to go on, obviously, off, as it is, plus to go to one kilowatt. To, this is just for the heating system and the hot water. One kilowatt, so it will do it, but very slowly. 
two kilowatts in the UK on most campsites you will have that available you can go up to three kilowatts on the system however if you are doing that to boost the heat very quickly if you put the microwave and the kettle on something will uh, trip out so I usually recommend in the UK to go on to two okay that and store okay and that is the heat you will have the um, the full book uh, available to you and of course if you do get any questions you can always give us a call that way it says enter here yeah, currently that would be the time it's not the time i can assure you i'm not here at 25 past five in the morning uh you can then press the arrow and go into user settings to enter and there are all sorts of settings you can go into there as i said we've got a book uh, for you to go through everything but you've got key tones warning tones standby all sorts of things okay but that is the main control in the van. Right. As typical with most caravans these days, lots of storage within. Uh, on the left hand side, above the sofa, there is the uh, antenna for your TV and uh, the radio. Uh, the booster part is there. There is a switch on here to switch on. Uh, I always keep it switched off when I'm not in the caravan. Um, just don't, don't want to drain any battery. I don't know if it will or not. Uh, but that's for your TV and radio antenna. With the TV antenna, that undoes. This then pushes up and you can twist around. Have a look to see where everyone else is pointing their uh, aerials. So you can uh, find out where's the best place to get your TV reception. Uh, once you've got the aerial in place, then retune your TV. You can also change the pitch of the dish by twisting this around as you need to, or if you need to. Okay, the, van, the caravan comes with a um, stereo. Uh, this is a CD player and stereo. Also has an auxiliary uh, point there. So pick up your. Uh, radio favorite radio station or play some CDs. Okay, it's got the speakers above. I've got a nice old fashioned looking clock there. Okay, right. To the windows. The windows themselves open very simply. I, I'm not going to open these at the moment because it's, it's still raining a little bit outside. Uh, these lift up, lift out, and when you push the window out, tighten the, the struts up to uh, keep the windows open. Um, all of the windows in here have both blackout blinds and fly screens. The blackout blinds lift upwards from the bottom, like so. And the fly screens from the top down. And that's the same on all of the windows in this caravan. Here we are at the front. You do have a very handy table that comes out. Very useful for uh, cups of tea, glass of wine, whatever takes your fancy. In the corner, you've got the uh, TV aerial point. You've got uh, a 12 volt socket, should you wish that to, uh, if you're using a 12 volt TV and a standard 230 volt socket there as well. Okay, carrying on around the caravan. You do have lots of individual lights in here, which you can have individual switch off uh, c capabilities. You also have coming over by the kitchen sink, light switches there, two 30 volt sockets. Ooh, nice little cocktail cabinet. Okay. Earlier, I did mention that there, um, if you had three kilowatts going through the heating system and you turned on the microwave and a kettle that the uh, you'd probably trip something out the trip switch itself is underneath but not the trip switch the fuse box is underneath the uh, sofa in a little cabinet of its own that's where the breakers are and the fuses are also in there Right, kitchen area. Uh, 
nice mixer tap, uh, sink, and, and the fridge. Okay, so the fridge is the Dometic fridge. Uh, to get the, this is currently off. If I wanted it connected, because we've got mains hookup, that would go on to the electricity. Um, you can have it, that battery is not to do with the leisure battery. If you have the 13 pin uh, adapter on your, on your car, if your fridge is already cool, this will maintain the temperature from the alternator of the car. It will not cool it down from the start, but it will maintain the temperature. Likewise, if you're in a field, no electric, you can run on gas, put it onto the gas, and you have the gas ignition over here. I can't demonstrate that because we don't have any gas attached here, but that would normally go on electric. And there is your temp temperature control of the fridge. Just have a look inside. Nice size fridge, plenty of room, little freezer compartment, which is removable if you want more fridge space. And that obviously is up to you and whatever your preference is. Next to the fridge, we've got the Thetford Caprice Mark III oven uh, and grill. So you've got the grill, separate oven. Apologies if you get a reflection of me and I don't want to scare anyone, so don't show any children. <laughs> the um, lid always must be up when you're going to use the, the uh, hob. You've got a, an electric hob and you have three gas burners. Um, the grill and oven are also gas. You will get a booklet uh, with this to show how everything works. I'm certainly not going to uh, teach you how to use an oven. Underneath, we have two electric points, one for the hob and one for, I have no idea. Oh, yes, I do know what it is. Uh, the, uh, one of the isolators, uh, one of the plugs is for the hob, uh, the electric hob, and the other one is for the fridge. Now, even if that's turned off, the fridge light will come on because that runs on the 12 volt uh, circuitry, um, but that's for the fridge. You also see here, you've got individual gas isolators, You've got for the barbecue point, uh, for the hot water, the fridge and the oven. Uh, there's a little description on there of how to keep them open uh, or close them. Um, as this is a setup for propane, personally, I just turn the uh, tap off on the gas bottle itself, and then I'll run, switch one of the gas burners on and after a couple of seconds, any gas will be uh, will be burnt off. So that's the uh, kitchen area. There are lots of uh, spaces. For example, you've got a cupboard here with your cutlery uh, tray. But moving around, you've got a uh, microwave oven. Sorry about my reflection. Again, there is a book for the microwave. You've also got a electric socket turn off point for that as well. Okay, down here, you've got another TV uh, antenna point, uh, light switch and two more, two 30 volt sockets. Uh, don't worry about this, this is to do with the motor mover and as I said, I'll get to that a bit later on in the video. Next into the bedroom area, two single beds under the first bed. Just to show you, there is a Standalone table, and there is the uh, point for that's to do with the, the motor mover. And under the other one, there's just lots of storage space. Okay, into the bathroom. Let's try to avoid the mirror. Standard set for toilet. As I said earlier, when about mentioning emptying out the cartridge, this is where the light comes on to say it's full. That's your flush, uh, with the rinse, the pink rinse. Uh, the seat does swivel, but when you need to empty the contents, uh, this handle slides across to release everything, slide it back. But do make sure you slide it back because if you don't, the, uh, it, you cannot take the cartridge out next to it. So, large wardrobe, 
uh, shelf at the top. There's your Aldi heating reservoir. That's where the glycol and water mixture is. Don't need to worry about that. Uh, that should all be covered uh, when you have the uh, service. As you can see, this particular van has had it's got a full service history on it. Got all the all the um, all the stickers to say that's all uh, all up to date. Uh, window again. I'm trying to avoid the mirror. Then you've got uh, sink and a mixer tap, and then you've got a shower, which opens up like so, and a nice large shower. Again, mix the tap on there. Here you have the light switch for the bathroom. Any other features in here? Yes, we do have an Omnivent in here. The Omnivent works, uh, it's like an extractor fan. So it, it does need to be opened here to open uh, a flap outside. And then by pressing the power on, you can draw air out as an extractor fan, or you can have air coming in, just like a, like a cooling fan in the, in the summer. And then switch it off, but always remember to close the fan when finished with it. Uh, same with any of the roof lights. Make sure they're closed uh, when you're going to travel. So, that's the uh, the interior of the Bailey Unicorn kit is. Obviously, if you have any questions, please do feel free to call us on 01373 752100 because uh, anyone here at Wiltshire Caravans is more than happy to answer any questions you may have. Show you the uh, how the motor mover uh, works or how to use it. Um, the battery box itself, which houses the electric hookup, and as I showed you briefly earlier, this part is the uh, isolation switch for the mover. Do we do need to take the electric hookup out first? point the motor mover itself there's a little red key that goes in where there's a little cut out to push that in and twist it as far as it goes you now have power to your motor movers at this point you normally lift the corner settings up but for this demonstration I'm just going to show you that the motor movers how to engage make it work we're not going to uh, lift the corner settings and when you're about to use the motor mover obviously you will need to disengage the handbrake but again we're not doing that at this point so we've now got power to the motor mover to switch on the remote control we would need to press the two green buttons simultaneously We'll go through a very quick diagnostic and now it's showing me that it's okay to use with a solid green light. To engage the automatic motor mover you need to press the orange button in the middle and where the light is shining towards a wheel so to speak, green shows the wheel, press together whilst that's flashing away you can hear the motor mover starting to engage onto the wheel. Okay, so that's now complete. The motor mover is engaged on the wheel. The wheel being, uh, the tire being at the correct pressure. That is now all set and ready to go if we had the legs up and the handbrake off. Okay, then to take the motor mover off the wheel, orange button again in the middle, and then the, uh, the top one to show, the red side to show it coming off. Press together, 
again, you can hear them, hear the motor taking the mechanism away from the wheel. up a little diagnostic to make sure everything's done and once the green light has stopped flashing there we are you'll be ready to go now to actually use the mover itself if you think of this red outline as the shape of your caravan this is your a-frame it's part here okay so if you wanted the caravan to come towards you you simply press the button towards you you can hear a beeping, nothing's happening because we're not engaged, but I will show you that the motors roll. So press the button to, as, as if to come towards you, and the rollers will roll. Okay. To turn left and right, either way, backwards. So in effect, it is just like a remote controlled car. Okay. Now, if this is the front and you want to turn this way, instead of pressing this one, which might be the obvious choice, you need to press that one and that will turn it around that way. But then, when you are set up, when you've got your caravan in place where you want it to be, turn off the remote control, press the green button, so that's now turned off, and brake on. And then take out the isolator key and the battery box. Just to save any drain on the battery. And then these loose the corner studies. I did say I'd show you how this is done. Inside this cabinet, you've got this. Uh, I'll lay it on the floor just to show it to you. This is the uh, leg winder, not the leg puller, the leg winder. And, uh, and by each corner steady, there is a bolt that goes onto, and then just I can't do this while holding the camera. Just twist away to raise or lower the corner settings. And that, it's just about that for this handover video. So, all left to say is, uh, Thank you for purchasing from Wiltshire Caravans. Do give us a call on 01373 752 100 if you have any uh, questions or issues. And enjoy your caravan. Thank you.